Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics where we are working on making this into, you know, kind of an actual game. We set up this top bar in the last episode. It's not perfect. And in fact, I kind of want to set the width of this to be basically equivalent to the width of this. I mean, it kind of is going to look a little weird probably, but this will this will have to be fine. Okay, so uh, you can see that it's largely working. Excellent. And then the question is, if we were to change to a different aspect ratio, what happens? It continues to work. Perfect. 4x3, 3x2, 16x10, free aspect, it's all fine. Excellent. We're going to continue designing for 16 by 9, but we're going to try to make sure that the other aspect ratios tend to work as well. So our start date is definitely going to be 12 o'clock at... Well, actually, we're probably going to start at midnight? We're going to have a day-night cycle? I have no idea. I have not made these sorts of plans. But I think we're going to probably start at midnight on 1 January 2000. 1 January. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our UI scripts here. Actually, let's create ourselves a new folder and we will call this busyness. Whoa. Busyness. There we go. Okay. Create a C-sharp script, and I'm just going to call this business. And this is going to be the core of our game right here, probably. This is going to be what keeps track of all of our financials, what does all of the uh, things like that. We're also going to have a... Uh, actually, I'm going to close that. Because I want to rename this folder from business to core. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to split off a couple of things. So we're going to need a C -sharp script for time manager. There we go. And the first thing I want to do is just set up the paused, play, fast, faster speeds. So let's go ahead and open up our time manager script. There we go. It just wanted me to reload the solution. And the first thing I'm going to do here is a public enum game speed. And this is going to be paused, playing, fast, and faster. We're not going to have a fastest for now. We can always add one later if necessary. I mean, we could theoretically add one, but I think this is fine. I think that's just fine. So, um, first thing we're going to need to do is probably... Are, are we going to just use a date time class? We could use a C-sharp date time. So, public date time. And I think we need to be using system.time. Uh, I forget. Where is this in? System dot. Actually, is it just time? I forget what date time is is declared in in C sharp. Oh boy, let me look it up. C sharp date time. Date time is in the. Where are you? I'm in the documentation here. Oh boy, they're not telling me where it's where the include is. Let's check this one. It's just in system. Okay. Okay, yep, it's just in system. So public date time, current time. 
And we're just going to have this be... Can we set it in the inspector? I don't know if the inspector shows the date time. Let's just go ahead and create ourselves an empty. And I'm going to call this scripts. There we go. And we'll just put miscellaneous scripts that don't really go anywhere else here. So we'll put in the time manager. Yeah, the date time doesn't actually show up. Okay, um, is there a way to get it to show up? I mean, we could code our own. I guess that's a possibility. It's going to take some finagling because, like, months have differing amount of days. Figuring out whether it's a leap year or not. Yeah. I mean, it's doable. So I suppose we could just, in the in the time manager, we could just say... Um, rather than using system and using date time... We'll roll our own. It's going to take a little extra time, but it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new C Sharp script, and I'm just going to call this Moment. And this Moment is going to be uh, interesting in getting it to work. So the Moment will contain within it a few things. One, it doesn't need to be a mono behavior. Two, it will need a couple of enums, so public enum month, and this month will be January, February, March, April, May, oops, forgot my comma, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. So there's our months, and we're going to need a couple of things. So first off, we need to have... I, I think we don't need to resolve seconds, so public int minute equals zero for right now. And then public... actually, let's, let's just go with public int hour equals zero first. And then minute equals zero. Then we're going to have to probably run some get sets for those. But we'll deal with that in a bit here. And then public int day equals zero. And then public int... Actually, not even an int. Public month month. Just because we set up this enum for a little bit easier... Like, so we can see a little bit better. I mean, it's going to be zero indexed, so that's something we're going to have to keep in mind. But we'll be able to see what month it is just a little bit easier that way. We could do it as an int, that would be fine, but I'm not going to do that. And then public int year equals 2000. And then public string to string so that we can convert this into a string for a readout easily enough. We're just going to return hour.toString plus plus minute.toString plus a space and then plus day.toString plus a space, plus month. Hmm. Plus a get month string. And that's going to be passing in month. That won't do anything yet. Plus a space, and then plus year dot two string. Okay. So obviously that's not going to work yet because get month string doesn't exist. So we're just going to do a switch statement for that. Switch. Actually, this is just going to be public string get month. 
Wow, I cannot type. Get month string. And we're going to grab our month here. And this is going to be of type month. There we go. And then we're just going to say switch month case month dot January return January and that's all we got to do pretty much and then we just replace these so January February March April May June July August September November and December I forgot one October there we go Okay, so I'm just going to February, 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 March, 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 April, 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 May, 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 June, 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 July, 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 August, 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 September, 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 October, 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 November, 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 and December, 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 not je decemberary This isn't RimWorld. And then just default return unknown month. Should never happen. Okay. So, I mean, two string hides that. That's fine. We'll, we'll just override the two string. So public override string to string. There we go. And now we can get our month and that's fine. So the next thing is we need to set in some get sets. So for our, the thing is, we need to, uh, all of these are going to be essentially dependent on the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and do minute first up here. We're going to have to remember it's in that order, but that's okay. So can we do a get set when we are actually setting it here? I don't remember if we can. Let's find out. In fact, I've completely forgotten the syntax for a get set. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. What is the get set syntax in C sharp? Yeah, that's what I thought. So we just need to say public int minute and then get set for now. Can we then do equals zero over here? Auto property initializer is not available in C-sharp 4. We would need language version 6 or greater. Okay, that's fair. We can set it in the inspector. That's fine. So if we are getting the minute, that's fine. I don't actually care. But if we are setting the minute, then we actually do need to worry. Because... Oh, we need to declare get if we are declaring a set. Okay. We'll just return minute. There we go. Easy enough. So if we are setting the minute, then we need to say a couple of things. First, if value is less than um, less than zero, then we need to say hour minus minus. Else, if value is greater than or equal to zero, or rather 60, because time is zero indexed, so if value is greater than or equal to 60, then we need to say hour plus plus. And then here, we're subtracting the value. So I think we need to say while value is less than zero, hour minus minus value plus equals 60. Okay. 
and then minute well actually so while value is less than zero we do that and then same thing here while value is greater than or equal to 60 hour plus plus value minus equals 60 and then minute equals value like that Okay, so if our value is less than zero, it increments down the hour until the value is greater than zero, zero by adding in 60 every time. And the same thing on the other side. While value is greater than or equal to 60, hour increments and value goes up. Okay. And then it sets the minute to equal the value. And then we have to do basically the same thing for the hour so I'm just going to go ahead and move this right down over here. And for the hour, we're going to need to do the same thing. So get return hour. And then a set down here. And we're going to need to do the same thing. So while value is less than zero, we need to say day minus minus, and we need to then say value plus equals 24. And then down here, while value is greater than or equal to 24, day plus plus, value plus equals, or rather minus equals 24. And then we just simply say hour equals value. Okay. So now we can set it and it'll run this logic every time we set it and it'll evaluate it and say, oh, we're at hour negative 15. That's actually meaning, uh, let's see here, 9 a.m. on the previous day. So that way we can increment our hour and it'll just automatically increment or decrement everything as needed. Theoretically, anyway. So then let's do the same thing for the day. But this is going to require something a little bit more in depth. So get return day set. Now, we don't necessarily know how many days are in the current month, right? So we need to then get ourselves a function for that. So public, and this is going to be an int get days in month, and this is going to be month, month. And most of these are going to be pretty straightforward, and we can just copy this switch statement nearly verbatim, and then default would be returning 30. Let's see, December has 31 days, I believe. Uh, yes, it does. November has 30, is that correct? Yes, November has 30 days. October has how many days? 31, I think. 31, yes. I believe September has 30, but we can always check. September has 30, yes, 31 in August, obviously, as well as July. And then June, I believe, has 30 days. But I'm going to just double check that. June has 30. May has 31. Okay, I believe April is 30 as well. It's probably faster to go the other way. Yep, April is 30. March is 31. And then January is 31. February is mostly 28 days. Mostly. Not always, though. And we're going to need to run a little bit of logic on what year it currently is right here to determine whether it's a leap year or not. So there is a code snippet that I have found before. Find if leap year that I don't fully understand. Um, yeah, this one. 
<laughs> this one right here. I don't fully understand how exactly it works, but this is really awkward. So if, and this needs to be year instead of X. So if year percent 400, so this is the modulus operator and it's just checking to see if it's one of these, if the remainder is true. So if it's every 400 years, every 100 years, or every four years, then it's a leap year. In which case we want to return 29. Otherwise, we just want to return 28. So I can't take credit for this particular code snippet. This is, I, I just like to think of snippets like this as black magic. That's basically all we need to know. Okay, so now we know how many days are in each month, which means that we can determine whether our value is needing to increment the current month. So while value is less than zero, then we can say, well, we want to change our value based on the number of days in the current month. Or the new month. Yeah, the new month, I think. So we can say month plus plus. I mean, it's it's going to work fine because that's a... Uh, actually, month minus minus. It's going to work fine because under the hood, that's an integer. And then value plus equals get days in month, month. We'll have to test that a bit to see if that works exactly as anticipated. But while value is greater than or equal to get days in month, month, then we can simply say month plus plus value value minus equals get days in month, month, and then day equals value. Okay, so there's our days set up. Like I said, this would be a little bit in-depth. Months are going to be much easier, so we can just simply say get return month set. So now we can say while int month, and because we're going to want to cast this over to an int, while int month is less than zero, then all we need to do is say year minus minus month plus equals, and we're going to cast this over to a month, and this is going to be um, 12. We cannot add months. month equals, we're, we're going to have to do this a little bit differently. So month equals, we're going to cast this in. And then here it's going to be month plus 12. And actually this should be value equals, and we should cast this into an int. We can actually just plus equals and add in 12. So value plus equals 12, right? Yeah, that should be fine. And then while, I don't know why I did this. This should be value. Well, value is less than zero. And then down here, while value is greater than 12 or equal to, greater than or equal to 12, then we can go ahead and say, we need a closing parenthesis here. Then we can go ahead, go ahead and say year plus plus value minus equals 12. And then month, or actually just, yeah, month equals value. 
But we're going to need to check this here. While value is greater than or equal to 12. Okay. Well, it's just greater than 11. Why is this giving me an error and this isn't? Value is being a month here, but is being... Do we need to cast this over to a month? But if so, why is this working, but not this? And uh, that needs to be capitalized. A value is less than or equal to month 12. So why is this working, but this isn't? I don't get it. I'm going to cast this anyway. There we go. And then year, honestly, can just be what it is. If we're going to increment the year, that's fine. Okay, so let's go into our time manager, which is here somewhere. Here it is. So, public game speed speed. Public moment current time. Okay. So now if we pop over to here. Our speed is paused. And this moment should be system.serializable. But obviously we need that to be not here, but rather in the moment. So, where are you, moment? Did I close moment? No, it's right here. What am I talking about? System.serializable. Okay. And then I think we might need to... Serialize field? Yeah, there we go. Now we can see the current time in the inspector. But just the year. Interesting. Well, that's okay. We'll have a readout in-game, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. There. So let's go ahead and say using unityengine.ui. And let's... um. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here. It's about that time. And in the next episode, we're going to work on implementing the logic here so we can actually test all of this that I just wrote up. I want to make sure that that's all working correctly. But that will be something for next episode. See you all then.